clear more than 1,700 kilometers around the country. So it's an ideal opportunity for us as a country to go for blue economy. And this government, current government, actually, they have uh, it has uh, the national policy framework, uh, which starts for of prosperity and spender. There, we have clearly identified sustainable ocean resource. Sorry, sustainable ocean resource management for a blue green economy. So, the from the top, the uh, the vision is there, which that is given, and um, when we uh, from MIPA's point of view, as well as uh, from the country's point of view, we think uh, we are actually located in a very strategic location, but then uh, it also provides us many economic opportunities. At the same time, there are many environmental challenges. So basically, uh, we have uh, our national commitment because the, uh, the entire EZ we have declared as a uh, pollution prevention zone. But then, you, as you all know, uh, very uh, very well aware uh, from our country downwards up to Antarctica, there's no uh, hardly any, any landmass. So basically we, uh, we believe as a country that we have a global responsibility to, uh, to protect the environment that which will go beyond our country uh, in, uh, uh, in respect of uh, environment management protection. And we believe that we have to care for voiceless creatures and man manage environmental crime. So we this is in the background of our blue economy, uh, a concept this so i will uh, these, these are the common things that we uh, sectors that we have identified fisheries and maritime transportation uh, coastal and deep sea minerals and marine based energy uh, similar to any any other part of the world and uh, we very well focus on marine based communication and it so i will not go into detail because that is common to uh, any 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 country any organization are very similar very common. So basically, uh, our strategy is that we want to develop a national strategy, roadmap, uh, policy uh, at the top level. And at the same time, we, without waiting for that to happen, we have launched few projects. So uh, it is a two, uh, two way approach. While we doing the uh, top level policy strategy roadmap, uh, and we have uh, launched a uh, few projects to uh, reach the, uh, uh, to uh, go for sustain blue economic concepts. So basically um, from MIPA's point of view, MIPA actually either a mandated agency to protect, to prevent pollution, to prevent control and eliminate pollution within our coastal and marine environments. So basically that is our mandate. And apart from that, we actually are going to get more, more, uh, of area, so we have actually developed, or rather, we have uh, in the process of uh, um, amending our act, incorporating marine resource management. With that, only we'll be able to go for a blue economic concepts. Otherwise, we are just a regulatory body, and we'll not be able to do anything other than pollution control. So uh, that is in the post process, and we have launched SDG 14 Secretariat, and uh, these uh, basic documentation was done. Uh, SDG 14 preliminary assessment and then interagency coordination mechanism, all those things actually for the uh, developing the national strategy policy and roadmap. And then uh, we launched MIPA Academy uh, to develop maritime related in employment and professional qualification, and then a national uh, voluntary movement. And we have inc included a national marine water quality management program uh, uh, into our action plan. And we have coral and mangrove restoration, these will actually also uh, enhance our blue economy uh, projects. So what we have in uh, projects that we are uh, discussing at the moment is that we are uh, just, uh, just uh, we are actually had two, uh, uh, two large uh, maritime casualties, maritime disasters. So we are actually having discussions with various stakeholders, including donor agencies and uh, foreign countries. Uh, so uh, to get oil spill uh, response equipment enhanced capacity, we don't have a maritime uh, mar maritime disaster management center, uh, and uh, we are planning to put up a oil waste oil refinery facility uh, to receive uh, waste oil from the vessels because that is one of the mandated uh, uh, obligation that we are supposed to do uh, as MEPA. And uh, we are planning to develop 
14 numbers of uh, bathing sites as blue flag beaches. This is actually, I think, directly under blue uh, economic concept. Uh, so we have selected and we are in the process of uh, doing the uh, rest of the background work for this, uh, plus uh, to identify the uh, suitable potential donor agencies for this. And then uh, oil spill contingency plan that I told you, and uh, we have done the act uh, amendment so that we can go for these uh, additional activities. And then uh, apart from that, we, we have carried out a uh, lot of programs to manage marine litter because we believe pollution uh, is one of the challenges for blue economy. So we have to have many programs to counter marine litter, pro litter issues. Uh, and we have a uh, lot of uh, programs called beach caretaker. Uh, you know, we have developed, we have selected underprivileged community members who are living in the coastal areas and funded by corporate sector, private sector, and get taken that. Uh, likewise, we have many programs. I'm not going to discuss that in detail. And these are the proposed activities for blue economy. What we want uh, first and foremost is, is to do a marine spatial planning and then to zone our coastal, coastal and uh, marine area so that we will not uh, go for ad hoc development projects. And then uh, we, we have blue carbon project uh, for decarbonizing. And then we have selected a fisheries village which has uh, which has many functions, not only the fishery, but then it has the uh, many other uh, associated uh, uh, industries. So we are, uh, as a pilot, we are going to develop this uh, fisheries village as a blue green uh, village, fisheries village. And we have selected aquaculture uh, in Eastern province of the country and uh, some areas will be uh, 100% conservated for as marine protected areas. So those are, uh, I actually rushed through because of the time constraint. Those are the uh, planned projects that we have. And we have some challenges and uh, some of them are like this. Uh, the, the biggest challenge that we have is the pollution. So we have to have many continuous education uh, to, to all the stakeholders uh, to avoid the pollution or to minimize and eliminate it. And then uh, as uh, Mr. Uh, the previous uh, spokesman, uh, the speaker mentioned, uh, we also experience multi-stakeholder fragmented institution in Sri Lanka. There are various institutions now. There, there is a department for fisheries, ministry for fisheries, and then uh, the marine uh, mammals and the, the, the turtles are governed by wildlife, another separate entity. And then um, research is done by another entity. Uh, likewise, we have different entities. So that is one of the challenges that we face. And then uh, one of the other challenges is that uh, decision dri driven, uh, data driven decision making, that is a challenge because we don't have a data repository, we don't have baseline data. So that is one of the challenges uh, as correctly mentioned by the previous speakers. So, uh, and other thing is that we don't have continuous research facilitated or funded uh, which is aligned with the industry requirement. There are many researches happening at the universities, but then that is not aligned with the industry requirement. So that is also uh, one of the challenges. And then at the end, as usual, financing is one of the biggest challenges. So uh, I think uh, with that, I will conclude. Uh, if you have any uh, these, uh, questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Darshani, if I may call you Darshani. Uh, yes, we have many questions and many reactions. No, thank you, really. This was very rich, uh, browsing through the projects you have, the initiatives, uh, and also um, flagging towards the end the issues of, of um, coordination. On coordination, again, one wonders if uh, tools like platforms of data sharing can be of essence, can be of, of use, um, uh, whether constituting new platforms or having dissemination of already existing uh, platforms, like in India, there's the Incois platform, but there are others different countries. There are some in, in Sri Lanka, of course. Uh, you've been flagging the, the, the pilot projects and the programs and your discussion with uh, donor agencies and the international community. I'm sure this will ring a bell to uh, the EFD present in the room, so I'm not entering the terrain. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let our uh, partners and colleagues react. And last but not least, you've mentioned about a national plan. Uh, I'm sure that 
uh, of course, being an authority, you're entitled to do that. Uh, I will be interested in having a, a feedback later on uh, by uh, Commander Arnab Das on how institutes can feed in the national plans. This is the way it has happened in, in India. Uh, it's happened the same way in, uh, in Bangladesh, where uh, some institutes like the International uh, the, the, the Institute for, for Water Modeling are at the same time independent and close to the government. Uh, so I think that this issue of uh, having a national plan, also gathering all the actors and the stakeholders at the beginning is, is, is interesting and can be interesting in, in the context, again, of interaction with the EFD, because that is some sort of activities that uh, the research department of EFD and sometimes the operational uh, divisions uh, do support or participate.